We heard a rumor you've been thinking about the Umbrella Academy. So have we. Season 1 was fun, heartbreaking, heartwarming, exciting, and bizarre. And since it was such a grand adventure, we at The Binger took it upon ourselves to do a full recap of the story arcs of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, so you can be prepared to see the end of the world all over again in 1963. We've also got mad season 2 theories that tie in how a milkman hitman, a goldfish in a suit, JFK, and perhaps even a chimp dancing like Marilyn Monroe all relate to season 1's apocalypse suite. Season 1 Recap – Who's Who? In 1989, 43 random women who had no signs of pregnancy gave birth to 43 super-powered babies. And you thought 2020 was weird. One man, an eccentric billionaire named Sir Reginald Hargreaves, aka The Monocle, adopted seven of them. He had a vision of himself as the patriarch of a crime-fighting family and would stop at nothing to create that legacy. He gave them all numbers, some say in order of how powerful they were. Number one is Luther Hargreaves, aka Space Boy, who has the gift of super strength and ape hybridity. Hey, could he be Pogo's secret son? But seriously, more on his lineage later. Number two is Diego Hargreaves, aka the Kraken, the knife specialist. Number three is Alison Hargreaves, aka the Rumor, who can influence people through her hypnotic whispers. I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. But you're really tired. You're really tired. Number four is Klaus Hargreaves, aka the Seance, and can speak to the dead when he's not flying high in the friendly skies, if you know what we mean. Number five, aka the Boy, doesn't go by any other name and can travel through time along with being ultra violent. Number six is Ben Hargreaves, aka the Horror, who can do major damage with the monsters he can summon and channel. And finally, there's number seven, Vanya Hargreaves, aka the White Violin who is psychokinetic and atmokinetic, which is all tied into her ability to channel sound. Your emotions make you weak. Like ex-woman Jean Grey and Stephen King's Carrie, she has trouble controlling her world-ending powers as they are tied to her volatile emotions. And so her family both reveres and fears her. Then there's Mr. Pogo the Chimp, the Alfred Pennyworth of the Hargreaves estate. I'm pretty sure I stepped in half those peanut butter and marshmallow sandwiches. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through Grace, the android matriarch of the Hargreaves family. Cha-Cha and Hazel, the Thames Eternalis assassins from the future. Agnes Rofa of Gritty's Donuts and Hazel's super sweet lover. The handler who works for the Time Adjustment Bureau, possibly a division of the Adjustment Bureau. We are the people who make sure things happen according to plan. Leonard, a.k.a. Harold Jenkins, an Umbrella Academy superfan whose attraction to the clan turns deadly, Detective Patch, who seems to be crushing on Diego, and Dolores, number five's inanimate girlfriend. These are their stories. What happened in season one? After being trained by the Monocle and fighting crime during their tween and teen years, the Hargreaves family grow up a little broken and separated, specifically after the loss of Ben, who died serving a mission. The super-powered fam meet up after a long hiatus to bury their adoptive father, Sir Reginald. Tensions ride high as Diego and Luther share an outstanding brotherly beef and have it out during the funeral. We find out later that Diego swiped the Monocle's monocle, which may come into play in Season 2. Leading up to the funeral, Vanya has been living as a reclusive writer and we are told she is the only family member who has no powers. Klaus is a junkie and can talk to the ghost of their deceased brother, who acts as his Obi-Wan Kenobi. I went to the church that night that you killed Travis Marshall to tell you that I'm in love with you. In the tradition of Deborah Morgan and her adopted sibling Dexter on Dexter, and Iris West and her adopted brother Barry Allen on The Flash, there's an ongoing lust-love thing going on with the adopted Hargreaves, Allison, and Luther. 
the frustrated lovebirds find out that Grace was the last one who saw Sir Reginald alive. The boy reappears in their lives after being MIA for 16 years, looking like a 7th grader, despite actually being 56. He returns to them from a future where all of them except Vanya are dead, and he has to get his John Connor on and save the future from their family. Time-traveling hitmen Cha-Cha and Hazel come after number 5 throughout the season to no avail. When Diego notices Grace is getting senile, he deactivates his robot mama. The boy strikes a deal with the handler for a better position in the time-traveling organization in exchange for his sibling's life. It ends up being a dead-end arrangement as far as he can see, and so he buys out of his contract with a blowout, hijacking one last time-traveling valise. Look for the handler to take vengeance in Season 2, not just for that, but for having refused to shoot JFK. Hopefully, we'll also get a clue or two as to how, and for the love of all that is sacred, why he's dating a mannequin, and why she's named Dolores. Maybe he's going through a strange rite of passage like Lars in Lars and the Real Girl. You know, Bianca's um, a missionary. As the story unfolds, we get more and more clues indicating that Vanya is in fact the powerhouse of the gang. You think you're just, just ordinary? Allison used her abilities to suppress those of her sister-in-arms, and Sir Reginald put her on heavy meds to keep her powers sedated. On the other side of the tracks, there's Leonard, who grows up used and abused until he takes out his papa. Later in life, he dates the wounded warrior Vanya. Things start off okay, and he even reveals to her how powerful she really is, until she finds out he isn't who he says he is. His name's actually Harold Jenkins, and he was trying to infiltrate and harm her familia for snubbing him years ago. Vanya sends him to his maker at the start of her rampage. I'll save you from the evil Dr. Terminal! Look for him to turn into the wicked Dr. Terminal in Season 2 as the rules of time travel could bend the possibility of being alive in his favor. Vanya also slits her sister's throat for aiding and abetting her adopted father and runs to Luther for sanctuary. He ends up imprisoning her in a soundproof room. Big mistake. She breaks the walls down, ends poor Pogo's life, and heads down to her local concert hall to play the Apocalypse Suite on her violin, a song so powerful it initiates the end of the world. Hazel has a change of heart throughout Season 1 as he falls in love with Donut Queen Agnes, which ends up being his saving grace. Since Cha-Cha never learned to love anyone or even be mildly polite, and not to mention shot Detective Patch in the back, snuffing Diego's chances at love with her, she was vanquished by the falling moon, hopefully for good. During the Apocalypse Suite, Ben is brought fully back to life by Klaus and the dysfunctional family joins hands to travel back in time saving themselves from, well, themselves. Let's hope they don't do the same thing all over again in Dallas in 1963. Season 2 Theory – Dallas Season 2 is no doubt based on the Dallas comic book. In it, Sir Reggie becomes employed by the President so that the Umbrella Academy can help out with the Cold War. This is where we meet the shady intergalactic assassin of a milkman. Space Boy is part of the program and, well, took a page from Thor's book and ate his emotions. Maybe because he's spending his days fantasizing about living with his one true love and raising their monkey boys. Vanya has amnesia. Klaus is living large on the outside, but losing it on the inside. The Kraken has gone the way of Hawkeye when he becomes Ronin and punishes criminals a little more than they deserve. The boy is on the run, and Pogo is alive and well, dancing like Marilyn Monroe for number five? Let's just let that sit for a moment before we move on. In Season 2, we know we'll meet the Aranda Goldfish by the name of Carmichael, the one who trained Number 5 in the graphic novel. Oh, sorry, Shubunkenfish. Maybe we'll also see how Number 5 was surgically altered to become a Forever Boy. We may be introduced to Mr. Perseus, a super wealthy playboy who dresses in the world's most comfortable white suits and is perpetually drunk with power. The males of the clan may also spend a little time in the Vietnam War, hardening them up and breaking them down. Allison is still mute from Vanya cutting her until she agrees to commit treason and assassinate the president. She does so under duress when the League of Assassins put a gun to the boy's mother's head when she was pregnant with twins, revealing number five has a biological sibling, Space Boy. Look out for all this to happen and more in the second season. 
Season 2 Theory The Woman There's a unique looking woman we see throughout Season 1 that we genuinely hope to see again. If you look closely, we see her at the bowling alley, on the bus, at the rave, and running out of the bank as it's being robbed. Essential to the story? No. Do we need to see her? Yes. With a July 31st release date, we can't wait to see Vanya and the gang in action, and it looks like there will be dancing, arguably the best thing about the Umbrella Academy. What about you? Have you been reading the Umbrella Academy graphic novels? Who are you hoping shows up? Tell us your theories in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from The Binger. Adios!